Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to drop a significant chunk of weight in your headlamp just by modifying the headband. Now you wouldn't think a lot of weight would be stored in this somewhat light headband, the elastic part, but you'd be surprised. For the Nightcore NU25 headlamp, which is this white one up here, the headlamp itself weighs like 0.99 ounces and the strap that it comes with weighs 0.8 ounces, so it's almost half the weight of the entire headlamp. So if you can cut this down to just a couple of grams or like 0.2 ounces, you can save a significant amount of weight and it's definitely worth doing. As an added bonus, the strap I'll show you how to make today is more comfortable, fits your head better, doesn't slip at all, and you don't have to adjust it every time you want to throw your headlamp on. You just grab your lamp, throw it around your head, and you're good to go. Now this is a super easy project. You can do it easily with a sewing machine, but if you don't have one, you can also hand stitch this. There's only two seams you need to sew. Really easy to do. And best of all, there's only two materials in the whole project. Let's jump in. All right, to give you an idea of how simple this mod is, I'll just show you what it looks like. This is the Nightcore NU25 headlamp. And this is basically just a piece of grow grain ribbon. And on the ends of the ribbon, I've sewn in two little channels here. And through those channels, I've tied in a piece of elastic shock cord and that just provides the tension on the headlamp. Because the grow grain has no stretch, you do need some shock cord in there so that it can stretch around your head and hold tension so it doesn't fall off. And when I wanna put on the headlamp, I just grab it and make sure it's the right side up. You just put it on and boom. Solid fit, it's not going anywhere. I can adjust it. I can head bang and it's not gonna fall off. There are two materials you need for this project. They're both really easy to come by. You can get them in your local Walmart. You can get them through Amazon or somewhere like Ripstop by the Roll. First thing you're gonna need, grow grain ribbon. You've probably seen it in the craft aisle at your local store or in many of my videos on the DIY projects I've been working on. It's just a lightweight but pretty strong ribbon. Not quite a webbing, it's really thin, but it's tough, it lasts a long time, it can hold up to some abuse. So there are quite a few different widths of grow grain ribbon available and the width you need will be dictated by your headlamp and the current strap it has. So this strap here is about 7 8 of an inch, so I go with a 7 8 inch grow grain for that strap. Some other headlamps have smaller straps like this. This is the Black Diamond Iota headlamp, and this is a 5 8 inch strap, so I would use a 5 8 inch grow grain on this strap. Easy peasy, all you have to do is go to the store, take your strap with you, and just line up the grow grain to make sure it's the right width. In addition to the grow grain, the only other thing you need is some shock, is some, is some, some shock cord is some shock cord. Uh, I'm using 1 8 inch shock cord. I think 1 8 is the way to go here. It's a nice compromise between size, weight, and actual tension ability, if that's a word. But this will create a nice tension on your head and not be too tight. As far as color goes, grow grain is available in all sorts of really cool colors and some sparkly ones and some reflective ones too if you want like a reflective strap. I say go with something fun as opposed to your traditional black just because Colors are cool. Purple's a really cool color if you need a suggestion. Same thing with shock cord. You can get it in all sorts of different colors. This is a more boring white and blue shock cord that came out of an old tent pole, but I'm just gonna reuse it because I have it. As far as total cost goes, grow grain is like a couple bucks for a roll and shock cord is a couple bucks for 10 feet or so. Actual material cost of this little strap is probably like a dollar but you're gonna have to buy more than you need, so it's gonna come out to five to ten dollars ish. Still pretty cheap, and it's a really easy DIY project that's a good way to get into DIY too. So I'm gonna be making a strap for this Black Diamond Iota today, and like I said, first step is kind of measuring this strap to see how wide of a grow grain you need. I know that it's about 5 8 so I've pulled out my 5 8 inch grow grain, and you can see it's not quite the same width, but it's close enough on this strap that it's not gonna have too much wiggle room. And now what we need to do is actually find our head circumference. Now that can be done the complicated way with, and it's really not complicated, but the with a tape measure, but if you don't have a soft measuring tape, you can just do it the old fashioned way and the easier way in my opinion. First thing you'll do is make sure you have a really straight cut on the end of the grow grain. So I'm just gonna cut it like that. And importantly, take a flame to it and seal it off just to make sure that it doesn't fray at all over time. I'm all like, 
Ooh, a little hot. Wait for that to cool, and once that's done, all you have to do is take the grill grain and wrap it around your head. And you want to make sure to put it kind of where your headlamp is going to sit and where your strap's going to sit on your head so you get the proper width. And then just run it over until it just meets that and grab it, pinch it there, take it off, and make a cut to the inside. It doesn't have to be right where the line is. It's better to have a little wiggle room in there, so maybe go in like a quarter inch, cut the grill grain, and again, you want to seal it with a lighter. Now that you have a piece of grow grain that is basically the circumference of your head, all we have to do is create two little pockets on here that the shock cord can actually run through. Okay, so now we need to fold the ends of the grow grain here to form a little channel for the shock cord to run through. And it's very easy. I just use a ruler to help me line it up. But essentially, I have a fold at one quarter inch in and a fold at three quarters inch in. And to show you how that works, basically I fold this at one quarter inch, so I have a quarter inch of doubled over fabric there, and then I bring that fabric over to the one inch mark here, kind of like that. There are several ways to hold it. I use these little paper holding clips just to kind of clip it over until I get it over to the sewing machine. And then just remember to do the same on the other side. Once you have your two edges folded, all you have to do is sew a seam right through the top of this edge here, through the three layers where it's folded over three times, and then you're just gonna run back and forth over it about three times. That's all you have to do. So I'm gonna drive the needle in, got my hand on the reverse here, and you don't wanna go over the edge of the ribbon just because that weakens it a bit and it doesn't look as nice. So you wanna stay within the bounds of the ribbon and just go back and forth about three times. Now we just need to do the other side. And like I said earlier, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can very easily hand stitch this because it's such a short seam here. Okay, now we have the hard part done and we can move on to the easy part, which is adding in the shock cord. And you can see here, I now have two channels sewn onto the ends of this grow grain ribbon. And if I bring it back around my head, because we added those channels in, you can see there's a little space between there now, which is what we want, because we want room for the shock cord to go in so it can also stretch a little bit as well. Now, before you go ahead and put the shock cord on, you wanna make sure you know which type of headlamp you have and how the headlamp strap actually attaches to it. So for some headlamps, like this Black Diamond Iota, you can just take out the strap through this little slot in the back of the headlamp mount, and it's really easy. You just kinda of pull it through and keep pulling until it pops out. But not all headlamps have this little slot here that makes it easy to add a strap on. So you may actually have to thread this strap through the headlamp first and then add on the shock cord. One example of that is the Petzl Tika XP2, which is an old headlamp now, but a lot of Petzl headlamps still don't have this slot to allow you to just throw on any old strap. So what you'll have to do is remove this strap, feed the new one through, and then add on the shock cord. Now this step is also laughably easy. All you wanna do is take one end of your shock cord Make sure it's heat treated. This one already has been, but I'll just redo it just in case. The shock cord length is gonna vary a little bit depending on your comfort level with how tight your headlamp is and how big your head is overall. But I've found for me the ideal number is six inches. So what I do is lay out the shock cord by a ruler at the six inch mark, I cut it. Oops. And then I heat treat the end again with the flame. And with this six inch piece of shock cord, I will make a little circle through the headlamp strap, feeding it in a U shape through the strap like this. And once your shock cord is through both ends of the channel like this, you're gonna bring it back around and you're gonna tie what's called a fisherman's knot, sometimes known as a fisherman's bend, to join these two pieces of shock cord together. Now you wanna get the knots as close to the ends as you can with a little tail sticking out so it's a safe knot you want most of your shock cord being used in this main loop here. And then you do the same on the other side. And that's kind of ideal. 
This isn't the most secure knot, but I've never found that it's come undone, and it's one of the least obtrusive and least likely to annoy you as a headband knot. So as you can see, I mean, you can put that under a lot of tension, and it's not going to give. And it should look something like that. It has a little tail coming out at each side of the knot, and the two sides are joined. Only thing left to do is just reattach the headlamp to the strap. Now one thing I kept trying to do when reattaching my strap is go from the back side and put the, the ribbon on the inside kind of like that through the headlamp, but that does not work. What you want to do is come from this side, just like that, and bring this strap into the, the side that touches your forehead. So what you're going to do is just take the strap and kind of stick it on that corner there. And really then you can just pull it through and boom, it's on the headlamp. Once you get it on like that, you can test it out. This is a good tension. It's not too stiff. I, there's still wiggle room in there. I could slip it over like a beanie or a hat if I needed to. And it feels good on my head. <laughs> not coming off. Obviously the headlamp works. I don't know why that wouldn't work. Hopefully you can see that. You can just see how it kind of stretches in the back there. Not uncomfortable at all. And really there's no slippage to this headlamp. Sometimes with some headlamps, I'll get like a mushroom head where it kind of goes up and pulls my hair up. But I haven't had that happen with these straps for some reason. I don't know why that is. If you do find your strap slipping, one thing that you can do is add some grip to it. If you do want that, it's as easy as taking some Silnet and just putting a couple dots around the inside of the headlamp. Or if you want, you can do a full on stripe, but this will make it really grippy. As of a few days ago on my website, I just put up a master list of all of the cottage companies around the world. It is a work in progress, but as of now I have about 78 on the list. And on the website you can actually go onto a Google map and scroll around the globe and find out where all of your favorite cottage companies are and hopefully discover new ones. On my Instagram page I'm always posting all sorts of different updates from just random projects I'm working on, random hikes I'm on, and just some fun stuff too. So check it out. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to those too. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a way to lessen your weight and have a little fun with a DIY project. See you next time.